So in our solution, what are we given? Uh, we are given, uh, we are given theta one, the temperature after one hour. That is equals to 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, after one hour, we are given theta two, which is 40 degrees Celsius after two hours. We are also given that constant losses, P constant, which we are going to call iron losses. Constant losses of a machine, we sometimes refer them to iron losses. But we know in constant losses, we have uh, the iron losses plus the friction and wind losses. So this one will be equal to, uh, this iron losses will be equal to 80% uh, of full load copper losses. 80% of that. So this will be equal to 0 0.8 PC. PC means copper law, copper losses. And this is the full load copper, copper losses. And that's, uh, those are the things that we are given. Another thing that we are given, yeah, those are the only things that we are given. Now, we know temperaturized theta is normally proportional. What brings about temperaturized is the losses that we have in our motor. So this is losses. Uh, it's proportional to losses, which we sometimes say also proportional to the power rating, but which is what? Squared. Which is uh, proportional to the load, but the load is normally square? Squared. So we can say theta 1 is proportional to losses. losses when worked at P1, which is proportional to P1, which is square, square. We can also say theta 2 is proportional to losses when worked at P2, and which is proportional to P2, which is what? Square. Now, if this is the case, this one will help us when we are analyzing the losses and the temperature rise. Now the formula for temperature rise, the formula for temperature rise, we have theta, which is the temperature rise, is normally equal to theta m into 1 minus e per minus t all over ta, tau. Now, if this is like so, but this is when we assume our motor was started from cold. When you're starting to operate this motor, you started it when it was operating from cold condition. It, it was not being used before, before you start it again. Then we use this formula. But if you are starting it from a certain temperature, then we say plus theta naught, E power minus T all over ta, tau. This theta M is the final steady temperature rise. This theta M is final steady temperature rise. Now theta naught is the initial temperature rise. Theta naught is the initial temperature rise. And our tau here is the heating time co constant. So if, if theta naught is equal to zero, we are starting from cold, then our theta will be equal to theta m into one minus e per minus t all over ta, tau. So our theta here now, for the first case, our theta one, we say this implies what? 25 is equal to theta m, we don't know it. That's what we want to look for. Eh? Into 1 
minus e power minus t all over what? Tau. All over tau. But our t now is one what? One hour. For after 25 degrees Celsius increase or change, it is now one hour. If it is one hour, where there is this t now will insert what? One. So that is, we call it equation one. one. We also have 40, will be equal 40, 40, will be equal to theta m into 1 minus e power minus 2 all over what? Tau. This one we call it equation 1, 2. Now we want to solve. We want to solve for this theta m and tau. Before we go for analysis of the motor when it is worked at twice the rated out output. So in this we can opt and do some division. Eh? So we say 2 equation 2 divide by divide by 1. What do we get? We'll be having a case of 40 all over 25 will be equal to 1 minus e power minus 2 all over tau all over 1 minus e power minus 1 all over ta, tau. Now we know very well this one can be written as 1 minus e power minus tau, 1 over tau. What, this one is square? Square. By laws of indices. Eh? Eh. So this one all over 1 minus e power minus 1 all over what? Tau. But this one we can also say this is a difference between two square squares. So we can factorize it. So it will be 1 plus e power minus 1 over tau into 1 minus e power minus 1 all over what? Tau. All over 1 minus e power minus 1 all over tau. So from that, we can now say this implies what? 40 over 25, over 25. Hmm? So 1.6 is equals to 1 plus e power minus 1 all over ta, tau. This one, I've canceled that. This implies our exponential negative 1 over tau is equals to 0 0.6. So minus 1 all over tau is equal to ln of 0 0.6. So tau is equals to uh, minus 1 all over ln of 0 0.16. So just punch. Huh? 1.9. 1.9. Is it 196? Huh? 1.96. And this is in a hours. That is our heating time constant that we have evaluated from the two conditions that were given. Now from this, we can now be able to get theta m. So we say from 1, from equation 1, theta m will be equal to what? 25 all over 1 minus e power minus 1 all over 1.96. Eh? So this one will be equal to what? Hmm? 62.5. 62.5 degrees Celsius. So this one has now helped us to get what? To get what we call the parameters of that particular motor. The final steady temperature rise is normally very important in any given machine. And 
Uh, the final temperature rise is important, and also the heating time constant of that machine, according to the cooling arrangement that is required with the, where, the, where the motor is insta installed. So that is that. So, um, So at full load, at full load, at full load, at full load, losses will be equal to, the losses will be equal to what? Uh, uh, constant losses, or we just call iron losses, just like iron losses, plus copper law, copper losses. which will be equal to, this one will be 0 0.8 OPC, and this one will be PC, copper losses. Still we don't know them. We don't know the, that value of the copper losses, which gives us 1.8 what? PC. That is at full, at full load. At twice, at twice, the rating, of the motor, at was the rating of the motor, what do we expect now to be the losses? Yes? Hmm? The? Uh, uh, the iron losses. At full load, there is nothing that we square. The copper losses are copper losses, iron losses are iron lo losses. So, so we are not square? Squaring. Oh, so you think we should square? Maybe you can explain. Hmm? Hmm? We are supposed to square at full load. What you are talking about square is coming in now. Yeah. The next step, where we are now, at twice the rating. So PC was the copper losses at full load? At full load. Now, iron losses we are given, or constant losses, was 80% of the copper losses at full load? Full load, which is this one. So the total losses is equal to 1.8 was PC. So sound. Uh, at twice the rating now, when you now uh, change the loading of your motor, what changes is normally the copper law? Copper losses. Iron losses are, maintain are maintained. They are co constant. So we say, at twice the rating of the motor, losses are, losses will be equal to what? The iron losses, which is 0 0.8 PC, eh? plus full lo uh, pl plus now the loss, copper losses as twice the, re the rating. So because we are talking two times, you take that particular proportion or that particular fraction. Now it is twice, X times. You normally take that X and then you square, you square. So we are going to square this, then we multiply with the full load copper law, copper losses, which will now give us what? 4.8 watt PC. Will give us 4.8 PC. But we know, but we know, theta is proportional to law losses. Eh? So let's say uh, we want to compare the maximum temperature rises. So we say theta m 
this we want to stand in for theta m prime. We want it to stand in for what would be the maximum temperature rise when our motor is worked continuously on twice the rating of that particular mo motor. So we put theta prime m. This one will be proportional. We know it will be proportional to now 4.8 watt PC. Now theta m and a full load analysis, eh? when the motor wa is worked on its full load rating, eh? this is the maximum temperature rise. This one should be proportional to what? 1.8 PC. This implies what? Theta M prime, all over theta M, this one should be equal to 4.8, all over 1.8. Uh, let me put PC, but this one will cancel. This one and that will ca cancel. So we can now say our theta M prime, what we need, will be equal. Why are we going for it? So that we can be able to evaluate time required when that particular motor is worked on twice the rating of that particular mo motor. So this one will now be equal to one. Uh, it will be equal to 4.8 all over 1.8 times theta m, m which is 4.8 all over 1.8 times 62.5 degrees. That one we had calculated, eh? So this one gives us 166.7 degrees Celsius. That is the theta M prime. Now, when you work a motor, either on twice the rating, 1.5 rating, or you work it under half load, quarter load or whatever, what you normally check is that you don't exceed the normal temperature rise. Because if you exceed, your windings will burn out. That is, the, the insulation will now be interfered with and you will have a shot, then fire. Eh? So the motor should always be maintained or worked at the required temperature rise. So even if we are going to work it for a short time, by increasing the, 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 the loading, it should only go for a short period, period. And that is the period that we need, we need. So we say now, our theta temperature rise will now be equal to theta M prime when we are working it at twice the full load into one minus A, Power minus T all over ta, tau. So from here, we say this theta should not exceed the maximum of the final steady temperature rise. And the final steady temperature rise of that motor was this one. Eh? So we say 62.5 is equal to theta M prime and 1 minus E power minus T all over ta. Now, so theta M prime will be equal to what? Our tower, our tower was what? 1.96. Now we put input everything. So this will be equal to 62.5. We divide by 1 minus E power minus T all over 1.96. So uh, this one now. Uh, uh, no, uh, no, we want uh, the theta M, theta M prime we have, eh? Yeah, theta M prime we have. So we say now, it is 166.7. Eh? All of us, uh, 166.7, just a minute. Uh, we can now say this one to go the this one to go this way. Yeah? So 1 minus E per minus T all over 1.96 is equal to 
62.5 divided by 166.7. So from there, oh, what do you get? 62 divided by that? Hmm? Zero point three seven five. One minus that one is equal to that. This implies what? E power minus T all over one point nine six is equal to what? Zero point six two five. Zero point six two five. So this gives us one minus T all over 1.96 uh, is equals to ln of 0.625. T alone will be equal to a minus 1.96 multiplying ln of 0.625. What is the answer for OT? 0 0.92 over 0 0.92 hour. Which if you like, you can change into many minutes. If you don't like, you can leave it that way. And that is now the end of that que question. So a motor running continuously on full load has a temperature rise of 20 degrees Celsius. The heating time constant is 60 minutes. If the motor has a maximum efficiency at full load, determine the time required for the motor to be operated at twice the full load, at twice the full load. This one resembles what we are doing, but this is now short. There's only a new term that has resurfaced here. Maximum efficiency. Efficiency. That's the only new term in that. So how do we input this? Maximum efficiency. So in our solution, we are given theta m. This temperature, a motor running continuously full load has a temperature rise of that. Running continuously, meaning that's the final steady temperature rise. So that's another way of saying it, a eh? So it is 20 degrees eh? Celsius. Tau we are given the heating time constant, 60 mi minutes. Uh -huh. Now we are given the motor has a maximum efficiency at full load. So we normally know at maximum efficiency of any machine, of any machine, iron losses is normally equal to copper losses. Iron losses is equal to copper losses. That's copper losses, eh? And losses is equal to copper losses. And it is occurring at full load? So load. So this implies what? At our at full load. At full load. Iron losses. 
is equal to Kopala. Kopala, sir. Therefore, we say losses at full loan, at full loan, will be equal to what? PC, which is for iron losses, plus PC for the copper losses itself. itself. Then, losses at twice full load, at twice full load, will be equal to what? Will be equal to iron losses, which is just still PC, plus two times, two squared now, multiplying PC. So, this one will give us what? Five PC, eh? And this one was 2 PC. Now, if you have losses, you have, you have losses ready with you, then you can go to analysis of what we call the theta prime. Theta prime, which would we would like to stand in for. The maximum temperature rise, if our motor is worked continuously on twice the full load rate. So we say, uh, I think that one you're going to let. So theta m prime, which is now the one which goes with it, when the motor is worked continuously on twice full load rating, will now be proportional to 5 pc. And our theta m will be proportional to 2 pc. Therefore, theta m prime, all of our theta m, is equals to 5 all over 2. You're now seeing the pieces are cancelling. Eh? So our theta m prime will be equal to what? 5 all over 2 multiplying theta m. And our theta m was 20. So this one gives us what? 50. 50 degrees Celsius. If that 50 degrees is ready, then now we can proceed and get our time. So we say theta must then be equal to theta m prime into 1 minus e power minus t all over tau. So if that is the case, theta m prime, theta m prime will be equal to theta, uh, th that theta we have it, eh? It is 20 degree? degrees. We have it. Huh? Well, at the theta m prime, we have it. Eh? So let's just first put the values. 20 is equal to 50 into 1 minus e power minus t all over 60. And our answer will be in many minutes. Yeah. So if that is like that, we can say now. Oh, we leave this one this side. We say 1 minus e per minus t all over 60 will be equal to uh, 20 all over 50, eh? which is equal to 0 0.4. What? E power minus t all over 60 then will be equal to what? 0 0.6. If that is 0 0.6, our t. Our minus T all over 60 will be equal to LN of 0 0.6. So T will be equal to minus 60 LN of 0 0.6. And from here we get an answer. Hmm? 5. 30.65. That is minutes, eh? So that is the longest time you can work that motor at twice the full load rate. Mm. Theta M prime is the maximum temperature rise if our motor would have been worked 
at twice the full load rating continuously. Continuously. Let WC represent, represent copper losses, copper losses at full load. This implies copper losses copper losses at 0 0.8 of full load full load will be equal to will be equal to 0 0.8 squared multiplying wc which is equal to 0 0.64 wc but But at 0 0.8 of full load, PI is equal to what? PC. PI is equal to PC. This implies our PC, the copper losses at that time, is equal to. 0 0.64 W1 WC. Eh? So, let's go to 0 0.64 WC. So, WC here is equal to WC will be equal to what? Our WC will be equal to PC or uh, WC will be equal to PC all over 0 0.64 which is equal to 1.5625 of PC. And remember here, PC is equal to PI? Yeah. PI. At 15 minute rating will be equal to what? Rating at 15 minute rating. We need here the iron losses plus the co copper losses. 
So iron losses will be given by, iron losses will be given by, it is just PC that we are representing there. Uh, PI is equal to PC. Plus, now, what we call, we need now, at 15 minute rating, the rating is what? 500 what? what? So for us to get a fraction, it will be 500, we divide by what? By P, so that we get a fraction of full load? Full load. Our full load rating is what we are calling what? P. So, so. so if that is like that, then this one we are going to square? Square. Then we multiply with the rating at full low, full load. The losses at, uh, uh, we, we multiply with the losses as full, full low, full load. And our losses at full load is what? It's here. So 1.5625 PC. So this one will give us everything. So this is the same as, no, this is P1 plus um, 1.5625 times 500 squared. So how have you been getting, hmm? How have you been getting the losses at any other uh, loading? You take the fraction, you square, you multiply with what? The copper losses at full low? Full low. Sindhi, you make what to give Yeah. This is, P is the full load rating of our motor. To say me muta me kwambia, your, your full load rating is 1,000 watts. Eh? Eh? Now you want to run your motor at 400 watts. Eh? What is the fraction? This is uh, what fraction of that? So you send 400, you divide by 1,000. You get the fraction. Eh? Uh, that is, we say, this times our full load eh? rating. Uh, it is a fraction we compare with the full load. So this is one PC, and then 500 square times this. Hmm? 390. 96 to 5. 390. 0, equal 0 in between. Eh? 6 to 5. Measure over P squared. Eh? The whole of this is multiplying what? PC. That is losses at 15 minutes. Eh? And we have losses at what? Full load, A to go nine. Then what remains now is just what? To proceed and now analyze everything. Hmm? So next to analyze. So you have everything now. Yeah? So we say now, we would like now to get our our theta prime. Eh? We know theta m. Theta should be equal to what? Theta should be equal to theta m prime. Eh? Into e power minus, not e, into 1 minus e power minus 15, 15 minute rating. Eh? Over 60. So nearly all over 60. Mm. This one should be equal to the theta. So theta m prime. 
Theta M prime can be written as one. Theta all over one minus E per minus a core zero point oh five. Eh? Eh? That is our theta M prime. Now theta M prime all over theta M eh? will be equal to one. This is also Nikama theta M, eh? because we want it to be final steady temperature eh? rise. So this one should be equal to one. Losses at 15 minute rating, eh? minute rating divided by losses at full low, at full low. Divide by losses at full load. Full load. Now from here we say this is what equal up. None of theta m and the theta m will cancel. Huh? Are you seeing that? Oh, watch that one take. Theta m prime is this one. Theta m all over one minus e power minus zero point two five. Five. Eh? Uh, we are dividing with theta m, so here is equal to losses at 15 minute rating to go now up. Eh? So 1 plus 390.625 all over p square, p square. The whole of this we multiply with what? Pc. Losses. At full load rating, losses at full load rating will be equal to what? PC, PC plus, PC plus, uh -huh, 1.5625 PC. So this PC and those PC will ca cancel. So we have a scenario of oh. uh, this question you have in a new corner. Just write it down. So this one will be equal to now. Uh, one, this implies one all over one minus e power zero point two five. Minus, it is a minus, it's equals to what? It's equal to 1 plus 396.25 all over p squared divided by 2.5625. Yeah. So you can only see the only one unknown in this particular problem is p square squared. And the, what was our p? The continuous ray? Right here. So we solve and then we get. So just let's evaluate this and we say, let's evaluate that one. One divided by this. Four point five two. Yes on that. Four point five two. One, eh? Watch that baby you. Now as you can see, we'll be having four point two four point five two one multiplying two point five. 6 to 5 p squared will then be equal to p squared plus 396 to 5. Will be equal to that. 
So this times that. Multiply here. Hmm? 11.5 5.85 Huh? P squared is equals to P squared plus 390.625 So this implies what? Our 10.585 P squared is equals to 390.625.25. Therefore, P squared will be equal to just P. P will be equal to square root of 390.625 divided by. So P will be square root of this. So 10.585. So square root of that. What? 192 watts. And that is now the continuous rating of that particular mo motor. So that is the end of that question. So document as I bring example four. And as I bring example four. So, in our solution for this, we've been told a constant speed motor has the following duty circle. Load rising linearly from 200 kilowatts to 500 kilowatts for four minutes. It carries a uniform load of 400 kilowatts for two minutes. The load is then reduced linearly from 400 kilowatt to zero kilowatt in three minutes. Then the motor remains idle for four minutes. And then the circle is, comp uh, is again repeated. So if that is the case, that our circle is again repeated. So if this process is repeated indefinitely, we have now we are told we sketch the load circle graph. Gra. So the, here we are going to have the load. This is for load. And our load will be in kilowatt. Eh? On this side we are going to have our what? Time. So our load is rising linearly from 200 kilowatt to 500. So to say 200 equal some 500 dikwaba and then kumbe 400 naweza kuwa kama hapo this is just a sketch eh? mm. so for 4 minutes eh to go acha tuende 2 2 2 another 2 there 2 2 so you need 2 4 Six, eight, ten, twelve. 
So for four minutes, eh? So Elianza Apa. So let's get to this point, eh? At four, at four, but to the five hundred. At five hundred, eh? It was rising linearly up to five hundred, eh? Yeah, so to nine dumbbells. So like that, that is a point. So we are moving from 200, rising linearly up to 500 what? watts. Uh, 500 kilowatt, I mean. Then our load remains uniform, 400 kilowatt for two minutes. So at 400, at 400 we are here. We are doing it for two, two minutes. So here, here in the end, for two minutes. Then load reduced from 400 to zero in three minutes. Three minutes will be at nine. So in a reduce, then we, we, it reduces up to what? Up to, four, up to zero kilowatt. Then it, huh? then it remains, huh? I do, for four minutes. Nine plus four, we'll get for, eh? 13. So let's put a 14 here. So we'll end here. So we'll go all the way up to here. This you put in bold, eh? That is a duty circle. When you reach here, you say it is again going to start? To start. So, so if it is going to start, you have to show that another, another circle is sta starting. Mm, so we, that is what we will call load duty sa circle. In your books, because in my people and a doctor, they talk of story. 1,200, yeah. Oh, it is 1,200 here. Just tell of So we've gotten the equations of those portions of line. And they are to be squared. And we go for D, DT. Uh, so this is the, um, the, 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 value, the value required. Uh, remember, remember this is a root. There should be a root because it is a root mean square. Mm. There should be a root? A root. So what we go, this is, we can say this is mean square value. We calculate first mean square value of load. Mean square value of load? Of load. First we do the mean square value of load. Then later we are going to do what? We are going to get the square root? Square root. Now let's integrate. This one will be equal to 1 all over 13 and 2. We are integrating this one. And uh, integrate it with the method of integration. When we integrate this, what do you get? 1 all over 75. Or well, not 75. That one will be 1 all over 225. 75 times 3 is 225. Huh? Huh? 75 times 3 will be 225. Yeah. Yeah. Then we get here 200 plus 75t. This one is now Q? cubed. We put the limits from 0 to 1 to 4. Method of integration, algebraic substitution, or polynomial substitution. You can remember what we were doing yesterday about some integrals. Eh? Yeah. Uh, this one will be equal to one. 400 squared t 
but we are doing it from four to six. We have integrated. Mm -hmm. This one will be equal to a minus. Mm -hmm. Minus three all over four hundred. Four hundred times three all over twelve hundred. Eh? Four hundred times three. Eh? We are integrating. Eh? Then this one will be two hundred minus four hundred t all over three. Then this one is what? Cubed. And we are doing it from 6 to 9. And then that's all. Hmm? Gani? Oh, 1200. Oh, oh. He's gani? Our integration is okay. Eh? Our integration is in order. I hope there is no dispute. Unless mm -hmm. inside our limits, eh? Inside our limits. And this one will talk about papa. You know, this is what you are supposed to do. Uh, let's insert now. Uh, we need a calculator, a good calculator. Mm. 75 times 4. 300 plus 300, 500. 500 cubed. 500 cubed. Five hundred cube, then divide by two twenty five. So my two gamele. Huh? One times ten. Raise to power six, eh? Huh? Two twenty two twenty five. Nee, ready to kill. Hmm? Sixty four million times three. Divide by twelve hundred. Huh? One sixty. One sixty thousand. You know, we should add the other sense. Seventy six, nine hundred and fifty three point zero eight. If you huh? so the size of the continuously rated mortar, therefore, the size of the continuously rated mortar. equal to root of this, eh? 76, 9, 2, 3, 
0.08, which is equal to 1. Hmm? 277.3 kilowatt. Eh? Now, if you are to buy from a shop a 300 kilowatt motor, it's the required size. Eh? If you are to buy now from the shop, this is the calculated value. So the 300 kilowatt, kilowatt motor is suitable for this duty circle. Eh? Eh. Continuous rating of, eh? Continuous rating of a motor is the load that motor con can carry continuously without overheating and what we call uh, an overload of 25% is allowed on that particular bit. Eh? An overload of 25% is allowed for two hours. Eh? You should know by now. Continuous rating, maximum continuous rating, short time rating, intermittent rating. You should know those defi definitions eh? by now. Oh my. Same. Thank <laughs> you.